was raised in a household where the worst person on earth was Gloria Steinem. The worst person on earth. And I went off to college and graduate school, and while I was rebellious, I think a lot of that I still had in me. And when Margaret Atwood published that book, I was in graduate school, also very patriarchal, and I kind of absorbed the idea that oh, that wasn't a serious book. That was not a serious person. I had kind of absorbed the idea that what feminists were doing wasn't very smart. I fended it off in an effort to seem serious to all of the people I needed to think well of me who all happened to be men. Um, I, a lot of women do this. That's why we, we destroy each other in public. We need to seem serious to men. Um, and then in the 90s, one day, I got invited to a breakfast. And it was a breakfast full of the most amazing people I'd ever met who all happened to be women and they started to describe their work and it was the first I'd really ever heard what it was women were doing in neighborhoods and there was one woman who got up and described planting corn in the median the traffic median on Malcolm X Boulevard which she then harvested and made relish out of and canned and sold at Bloomingdale's and I just thought glory hallelujah I've never heard a better thing in my life and I was that day forward a feminist and I got to meet Gloria Steinem and I remember saying to her, she'd become a very close friend of mine, and practically a godmother to my son. And, uh, and I said, I, I, I need to hug you right now <laughs> because I feel like I, I need to finish the crossing over. I think I didn't cross over all the way until I rejected that idea that, um, that Margaret Atwood wasn't serious and that, and that what women said and did didn't matter. I think. I need to really fully exorcise that. And um, it wasn't until then that I started accepting the idea that what women did and said in the arts was in fact incredibly rich. It was more interesting and more important than what I was seeing over and over and over again, the same thing um, coming from a lot of men. And I started to understand how valuable it was to hear myself and see myself on screen and in books and so forth. I went back to um, a room of one's own just a few years ago because my daughter was in film school and I was trying to get her to stop doing things in order to seem serious to the men who were all judging her. I mean, it hasn't really shifted that much. And I sent it to her and then I read it myself. I read it when I was in my 20s. I didn't think much of it. I read it in my 50s and I wept. I mean, I wept because that experience of being um, brainwashed totally captured, colonized, by the idea that Margaret Atwood isn't serious and therefore you will never be. And your experience does, not only doesn't matter, it's invisible to me, never worthy of vis visibility. Those ideas are so insidious and damaging. They have to be fought. They have to be fought. That's why I'm in film. I mean, I can't think of a better way to fight them. This is, this is the rest of my life here. Mm -hmm.